you talk about electronic music, it's kind of a utopia, right? There's these utopias that you can make any kind of sound in the world that nobody's ever heard before, and you don't need um, you don't need an orchestra to play the music for you. That was the first utopia of electronic music, right? But I think the two most alienating things for audiences are the same things. They don't know what these sounds are, they don't know where they come from, and they're not seeing anybody make the sounds. So if you have some visual reference point, something for them to really look at, some you know, some way that they see that you make a motion and it physically responds, then it helps them connect with it better. I didn't study any of this stuff in school. I didn't study electronics. I failed every math class I ever took. I was studying literature. I was going to be a writer. Uh, the other thing that I never studied was music. I, if, if I would have studied music, I probably would have uh, learned to play the guitar, and I would have been in a punk band or a metal band, and my life would have been really different. But I was terrified of instruments. I was terrified of guitars and keyboards and all these things. So I thought, the only way around this problem is that I start making my own instruments and I make instruments that people have never seen before and then nobody can tell you that you're playing it badly because they've never seen anybody else play one before. I'm traveling almost constantly because um, I do a lot of workshops and teaching and performances in, in different cities. And every time I'm in a new city, I'm always asking them, where's the flea market? Where's the junk shop? Where's the second hand? Where do they throw things away? So I spend a lot of time in outdoor markets when I'm kind of on the hunt. And when I do a workshop, it's always, I like to do the shopping before I do the work. So I usually get the students together. And if there's some way that we can go on a Sunday and go find a flea market before we even start the workshop, then we can really hunt around together and they can show me things and I can say, yeah, that would work or no, that wouldn't. Traditionally, circuit bending is this idea that you take something that's already been made and it's been designed by another person and it's supposed to have a very specific function and you take it apart and you hack it and you get it to do something else. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people get into circuit bending um, knowing nothing about electronics and they don't want to know anything more than the most basics about electronics. Um, typically a circuit bender might open up a box like what we did and you know you lick your fingers and you stick your fingers in there and you try to find you try to tickle it a little bit you know and you find it doing something that the designer never intended it to do and then once you've found those things you try to find a way to reproduce that effect once you've put it back inside of a box. So that's the really traditional um, kind of circuit bending way. And it's, um, it kind of works from this place of willful ignorance, you know. I don't, I don't want to know how it works, I just want it to do something fucked up. Let's go. So that's very interesting. I, I try to come at things from a little bit different angle. Um, I'm also interested in this design process. And I think it's very empowering to, to take these kind of everyday objects from your world and almost like by magic transform them into something else. I think that that's really powerful because people just buy stuff these days. They just get it and they take it home and they plug it in and it does what it's supposed to and they never think that maybe it would do something different. And they certainly wouldn't like look at kind of everyday objects as being capable of being turned into art necessarily. A friend of mine invited me to play a gig um, once, and when I was finished, he says, yeah, but you only play the low tones and the high tones. Where's the middle? And I said, oh, what do you need the middle for? And he says, oh, that's where the lyric is, the lyric mode in the music. And he's absolutely right. In this kind of music, it, it's, it can be very confrontational. Um, the music that I like to make, um, and certainly the way that I like to present it in a concert, it's very physical. Um, in some ways, actually, I want people to turn off their brains a little bit and experience the, the sound from the body, or at least from the irrational part of the mind. 
I realized that, that that human side of the music where people sing about the ones that they lost or the melody comes up and you feel happy, um, they're probably not going to find that um, in this kind of music. And for that I make absolutely no apologies.